So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, uh, one of the very first violations of the CLRM that we will be discussing, which is entitled or called rather multicollinearity. So what is multicollinearity first and foremost? Well, multicollinearity persists when the independent variables are highly correlated to other independent variables. So if you recall, right, um, if we have a regression equation, say y sub i is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus u sub i, that's your error term. Well, in this case, you have, uh, you have uh, two independent variables and then you have one dependent variable. And our assumption, uh, right, when, you, uh, when we discuss the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, was that the expected value of x1 conditional on x2 is equal to zero and the other way around as well. In, in generalizing it for any n variable CLRM, it should be that the expected value of x sub i, x sub j is equal to zero for all i is not equal to j. That just means that two uh, different independent variables are not related to each other. Right? Because they are independent, they are called independent, so they should be independent, not just, uh, they should be independent, not just for the, uh, with the error term, but also with other independent variables. So what happens when we cannot satisfy that assumption? What happens is there exists a degree of multicollinearity, right? So that's what multicollinearity is about. Now, mathematically, as I've said, this is the expected value of the correlation between one regressor and another is not equal to zero, i.e. two independent variables have some degree of correlation with one another or have some degree of relationship with one another. With one another. Okay. Now, uh, our assumption, remember, was this one, which is that uh, this is our CLRM assumption, right, assumption. And what we said was, um, we, don't, we don't necessarily want uh, an independent variable to have another, uh, to have some correlation with another independent variable. And that's just because um, uh, it has, if, if it does have a relationship with other independent variables, as we will see in this video, uh, there will be some consequences to that, right? There will be some consequences to that in terms of the properties of the estimators and gen the general robustness of the particular model. So. Uh, let's ask a couple of questions with this one. So if you ask a typical econometrician, well, is, uh, is the mere presence of multicollinearity a big problem? The answer to that is not necessarily, right? A lot of econometricians believe that multi multicollinearity is innate or ever present in multivariate models. And that's because when we have independent variables on one side of the equation, it's sort of um, because the world is heavily interconnected. There are many relationships that cross paths in some or in one way or another. It's hard to find two exact things that are truly exogenous from one another. You can maybe find that in a very experimental setting, but in the real world, when you deal with actual data, that sort of exogeneity doesn't necessarily exist across different independent variables, right? Now, when does it become a problem? So if the presence of it is not a problem, okay, not, not, not really an issue, then how does it become a problem? Why are we even discussing it? Well, the real problem, okay, so when do we deem multicollinearity a problem is if the degree of multicollinearity is quite severe, right? That's, that's when it becomes a big issue, okay? That, and severe multicollinearity can do a lot of harm to the adequacy of your estimates, do a lot of harm. Now, I'll preface it by saying that the estimator that you get still remains unbiased and fairly consistent, but it is no longer efficient and that there are a couple of other things that may affect it, which we will discuss in a succeeding video. So case and point, multicollinearity is not necessarily a problem of presence. It is more a problem of degree or severity, right? Multicollinearity is generally assumed to be innate in a model. However, right, if it is severe, then it may cause a lot of trouble for you, right? So it's a problem more of degree or severity. Now, we in our class, we're going to discuss three main degrees of multicollinearity. The first one is tolerable, which is uh, generally okay, although what we want purely uh, in real life is 
truly exogenous, but as I said, many things in life will cross paths eventually. Uh, two is dangerous, which, uh, which is a detriment to the quality of our model. And the last is perfect, wherein our model will not run at all, or it will drop an erring variable. So let's discuss these uh, three degrees. The first degree is tolerable multicollinearity, and it just means that the correlation between the independent variables aren't necessarily high, or their correlation is relatively insignificant. Hence, it's just a presence, it's just there, but it's not a severe presence, right? And basically, that's quite a straightforward definition when we deal with tolerable multicollinearity. On the other hand, Dangerous multicollinearity is when the correlation between regressors is quite high, whether that's in a positive or in a negative direction. Hence, up, uh, apart from it being there, the severity is also there, right? So the magnitude is there as well. And this may lead to many consequences, which we will discuss in another video. The last one is perfect multicollinearity. And this is a type of multicollinearity that exists if an independent variable was fully able to explain the variation in another independent variable, right? So for example, consider this hypothetical model. You have employment being regressed against consumption and GDP, right? Now, if you look at this sort of carefully, okay, if you recall your basic macro, right, uh, using the final expenditure approach, the way we compete for GDP is just y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m, right? So if you think about it, right, if you think about it, uh, GDP is like this overall big circle. That is why, right? Because uh, that entire circle contains all of these factors here, right, uh, formulaically. And if you think about it, consumption is just a part of that circle. So consumption is something there. So why, as one of your independent variables, actually includes in its entirety the consumption variable there, right? Consumption is inside of Y. And by theory, right, that, that's the case. Hence, uh, theoretically, right, you should just drop consumption as they are perfectly collinear, right? What will happen is it will omit. Typically, when you run this in a program, it will omit the variable uh, that is inside another one. So con since consumption, is an element of the set of GDP or inside of GDP, then consumption is a mere subset of GDP, right? So when there is perfect uh, collinearity, there exists some independent variable, which is an element of another independent variable. Hence, the independent variable I is also a subset of the independent variable J, right? That's just some fancy terminology. And I think the best way to see this is sort of graphically uh, through a Venn diagram. So if you notice intolerable multicollinearity, right? Intolerable multicollinearity, the degrees of collinearity are not so severe, right? Not so severe, not so severe. But uh, in dangerous multicollinearity, it's quite heavy, right? So I can shade these entire things and they would have some sort of relationship. Say this is X1, X2, and X3 x1, x2, and x3. In perfect multicollinearity, you have, say, this one, x1. This is x2, and this is x3. x2 is fully contained in x1, right? The variation it tries to explain is fully contained in x1. So effectively, it would function just as well if you just took out x2. And uh, even then, the degree of uh, correlation between x1 and x3 is still quite high. Note that all of these are independent variables. Your dependent variable is not even here. Right. So what are the consequences? Well, there are a couple. There are four that we will discuss in a succeeding video. But um, uh, when these uh, consequences are going to be discussed, we're going to uh, know that OLS still remains the best linear unbiased estimator in this case. However, with a few caveats and detriments. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to what uh, multicollinearity is. In the next video, we're going to discuss the concept first of an auxiliary regression. And after that, we're going to discuss the consequences of multicollinearity. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.